Hey guys, welcome back. As many of you know, YouTube has a very large number of videos that show how highly corrosive gallium is to aluminum. In today's video, we're going to be testing 15 different metals to see what kind of an effect, if any, that gallium has on them. The metals that we're going to be testing are zinc, aluminum, or aluminium if you're British, nickel, bronze, stainless steel, bismuth, magnesium, brass, in this case yellow brass, copper, steel, chrome, indium, tin, silver, and lead. The lowest melting point metal is indium right over here. It's extremely soft. I could take it and put my fingernail into it and you can see it leaves like a, a dent. Let me try it right there. Hopefully you can see that. Extremely soft metal. And the melting point for indium is 314 Fahrenheit or right around 156 C. The next lowest melting point is tin right over here. That's 450 Fahrenheit. 232C. The next lowest melting point is bismuth. We've seen people on YouTube melting this down on their stove to form all kinds of cool crystals. And the melting point for bismuth is 521 Fahrenheit or 271C. After that we have lead right over here. Melting point 621 Fahrenheit or 328C. And last we have zinc right over here. That's 787 Fahrenheit or 420 C. Now those five metals have the lower melting points and if we look at the highest it's going to be chrome followed by steel and stainless and then you would have copper and silver, yellow brass and bronze over here would all have similar melting points and then the next lowest would be aluminum and magnesium. Both of those have very similar melting points right around 1200 Fahrenheit or 660 C. Okay, let me explain exactly how the testing is going to be done. I'm going to take the sample, we'll start off with the zinc. I'm going to take a very small piece of abrasive paper. This is 320 grit, and I'm going to gently rub to center to clear off any oxidation. Once that's done, I'm going to take some 91% alcohol, apply it to a cotton swab, and I'm going to wipe over the surface a couple of times, rotating the swab. And the purpose of that is to clear away all those particles that I just created and also to remove any oily residue from my hands. We don't want to have any oily residue on any of these pieces of metal. It may prevent the gallium from reacting with the metal. The next step, I'm going to take the gallium using a dropper. And I'm going to put a little bit on the center. And then I'm going to work it into the surface very gently using this probe. Just work it in very lightly and then I'm going to leave it. I'm going to repeat that for every one of these pieces of metal and then we're going to let this sit for 24 hours, come back and take a look to see what kind of an effect the gallium had on each piece. Now I don't want to bore you so I'm going to do three of these pieces of metal on camera and then all the rest off camera. Okay, we're going to start off with the nickel. I'm going to take the abrasive paper. I should go with the grain, but it's going to be more difficult because it's narrower. Let me turn it this way and just... And just so you know, the abrasive paper is going to be a new piece for each piece of metal. Okay, now a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Get the clean side, just go over it. I'm going to do it a few times so it's nice and clean. Okay. Now we're going to apply a little bit of gallium on here. Doesn't have to be much. Whoop. Perfect. Take the probe and very gently just keep scraping. any oxidation that formed after I cleaned it. We're trying to break it up. Alright, so I'm going to leave that now for 24 hours. 
Now we're going to go on to the next one. Okay, this is lead. Very soft. Okay. Okay, let that air dry a minute. Apply a little bit on the surface and work it in. And you can see this is actually sticking to the lead. When I did it to the nickel, the nickel didn't show the way this is actually working in. So that looks pretty good. Push this off to the side. Okay, now the silver dime. Sorry, Roosevelt. I'm sorry I'm blocking my fingers. Not going to be easy. Q-tips are being changed, and the probe that I use is wiped very good after each object. Okay, so that looks good. Let that dry. More than enough. Okay, let's work it in. like it's grabbing a little bit of that metal. Excellent. All right, so that one's done. Let me finish the rest. I'll come back and I'll line them all up on the board and show you them before I let it sit for 24 hours. Okay, 24 hours has passed. You can see this is still liquid, the gallium. And over here on the aluminum, it became liquefied over the surface. And you can see the color that the gallium changed, just like it did on the magnesium. Over here, the gallium has soaked completely into the indium. What I'm going to do is show you up close, one at a time. I'm going to clear away the gallium, look at the surface, then I'm going to try bending each metal sample with pliers to see if it easily breaks or crumbles into a lot of pieces. Let's start with the dime. Okay, so it did work into that surface there. You pull away the excess. Now I'm going to grab that with pliers. I'm going to try bending it. If it snaps in half easily, you're going to know it had an effect. If it doesn't snap, you're going to know the only thing that happened was some corrosion to the surface of the coin. And that is it. So let's give it a try. Okay, let me grab this side of it. Let me try bending it, see if it breaks. Mm, no. That is extremely strong. Nothing happened to that coin. So the gallium had very little, if any, effect on silver. Now we're going to take a look at the indium. Now the gallium had a big effect on the indium because you could see it soaked into it. And look at this. It actually made a mess. It's like dissolving the indium. So it Definitely has an effect. Look at it, it's just falling apart. As I move the indium around, it just keeps losing more and more. 
So you definitely don't want gallium and indium together. Okay, let's take a look at zinc. Let's see the surface of the zinc. All right, so it wets the surface of the zinc, but let me clear some of this gallium away from the wetted area just to see if the surface was etched away. It's really wetted. Feel this? Now moving across very lightly, I could just feel the area that I roughed up initially. So it appears to just have wetted the surface. Let me see if this bends easily or if it snaps. Okay. Let's see if it breaks up. Oh. Yeah, so that is not good. That broke just like the aluminum. Oh yeah, look at that. So it definitely damages zinc. So you could add that to the list. Okay, now let's take a look at brass. No damage to the surface of the brass. Now let me take the needle nose pliers and see if that also snaps. Oh, that's strong. All right, so it didn't have any effect that I could tell. No, on that piece of brass. Next up is aluminum. And here you can see the entire surface has been wetted. All right, so let me take all that off of there first. And right here you can see how it ate into the center of the aluminum. And it left that really nice shine on the surface. All right. Oh yeah, with ease. Absolute ease. It just falls right apart. Okay, let's go on to the next one, which is lead. All right, it appears to have done very little to the surface of the lead. Let me see. Yep. Let me see if it feels any different from lead that's not touched by gallium. Oh, no. <clears throat> no, it didn't have any effect on the lead. Lead is just fine. Next up is magnesium. All right, you can see the surface of the gallium looks like the aluminum. Yeah. All right, so let me just take this out of here for a second and dump it off and wipe it with a Q-tip. Come right back and we'll see if this one breaks easily. Here we go. Hmm. Wow. Not a problem with magnesium very strong and that's 24 hours later guys I would have thought that it would have fallen apart just like the aluminum but it did not <clears throat> same thing okay on to steel okay surface doesn't look bad let's take the pliers and see if it did anything to the steel No. Steel, not affected. Now let's take a look at copper. Let me feel if there's any depression here. No, it's perfectly smooth. Yep. Here we go. No. Bending just like copper would. Okay, so copper's unaffected by gallium. Now let's check tin, and if you look at tin, you can see it really wetted the whole surface really, really well, almost like the indium. Let me suction off the excess. All right, hopefully you can see this on camera. The tin has been really chewed up. So the gallium does have an effect on tin. It will corrode it. Let's take a look at the strength using the needle nose pliers. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, yeah, it feels different, yeah. It's crunching like tin does, it makes that crunching sound. Yeah, it definitely had an effect. Yeah, it had an effect on it, yeah. Not as bad as aluminum, but it definitely had an effect. Okay, let's take a look at nickel. 
Looks like very little if anything was done to the nickel. Let's check the strength of this piece. Okay. Nothing. Nickel did very well. Now let's take a look at bronze. As we saw, the copper had very little effect, but to make bronze, it's an alloy of copper and tin. So the tin was affected and the copper wasn't. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens to this bronze. The surface doesn't look too bad. I don't feel any depression there. Okay. Try bending it. <laughs> Oh, let me look at the inside of the structure there. I think it broke on its own because bronze will break just the way you saw. It does have a little bit of a brittle nature to it. So I don't think the gallium affected it, but let me take a closer look at the grain of the metal. Now let's take a look at stainless steel. All right, non-magnetic stainless. And I feel nothing different in that area. No effect on non-magnetic stainless steel. Now let's see how well chrome did. Okay, this is chrome over steel. So I just want to see if the surface of the chrome got eaten away. We know steel is unaffected, so there's no sense in trying to bend it. But I want to see if the chrome got eaten up. No. Surface of chrome looks pretty damn good. Okay, we're down to the last one, bismuth. And we can see, it's a little strange. It's got a shell on it. Let me wipe that off. Let's take a look at the surface. Yeah, it feels perfectly smooth, no corrosion there. Let me see if it crumbles really easy or it snaps really easy. Let's give it a try. Bismuth is typically a crumbly or brittle metal. So I'm going to try breaking it first and crushing it. Then I'm going to take another sample of bismuth that was untreated by gallium and make a comparison. All right, so let's try this. See if I just squeeze it. Mm, it holds together. I gotta give it that much. So it feels almost like lead or tin the way it acts. Yeah, see, this is pretty strong. I don't see too much of an effect on that. Okay, this is a piece of bismuth that was not in contact with gallium. So let's see how this reacts compared to the other one. Actually, seems to similar to the other one. I don't know. This one seems to fracture a lot easier. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.